I cried every single day going home. I cried before I even got to the house so my son wouldn't see me. I didn't want him to see that I had so much, which I'm pretty sure he felt it. In the early months of the pandemic, Jessica Duran worked as a housekeeper at a nursing home in California. It had one of the worst COVID-19 outbreaks in the area. I had to go out and quarantine in my brother's garage. And it hurt because I heard my son on the other side of the door saying, Bob, I just want to sleep with you. I just need a hug. And I couldn't. I couldn't do that. All I can just text him, I'm here. I'm right here. I love you. I'll be okay. You'll be okay. And that's the thing that scared me the most is I was going to bring something into my family. When the pandemic hit the U.S., nursing homes became ground zero for the virus. As of October, more than 55,000 nursing home residents have died. We have a tradition of very poor infection control in these facilities. And I think what it comes down to is we don't treat older folks the way we treat others. And we don't value their lives as much. That's, that's been evidenced in the pandemic. In California, nearly 150 nursing home workers have died. Jessica was afraid she would bring the virus home to her young son who suffers from asthma. So she quit in May, but still thinks about the elderly residents she left behind. I was still dream about them and some of them just screaming and then there's some of them down walking down the hall saying help and some of them will be like I just want water and until this day I even asked I wonder if they're still there California was one of the state's hardest hit by the coronavirus and nearly a third of its death toll came from nursing homes Faultlines investigates how an already troubled nursing home industry imploded under the weight of the pandemic. I think it says that in many instances we put profit above patient care. But isn't that the American way? Bakersfield is a city in the heart of California's Central Valley. When we went there in mid-August, it was one of the worst coronavirus hotspots in the country. According to the California Department of Public Health, there have been multiple deaths due to COVID-19 at the Kingston Healthcare Center here in Bakersfield. In early May, nearly half of the cases here came from the nursing home where Jessica worked, Kingston Healthcare Center. Nine residents at the facility have died so far, making up for 60% of the total COVID-19 deaths in the county. When COVID hit, Gonzalo Moya had been a resident at Kingston for nearly 20 years. Uh, he was very stubborn and he had rules for us all the time. But he was a good man. He was good to us. He provided, he did farm labor all his life. He started having min, uh, mini strokes. Um, it just got worse every, well, let's say for a year and a half. And then eventually I had to put him in a home. Minerva and her daughter Angelica would visit Gonzalo every day until the lockdown in March. Coronavirus came around and I couldn't visit, so we did FaceTime. But every single day that I was seeing him, he was either in his gown, laying in bed all day long. Sometimes I found him dirty. And I just, it broke my heart to see all that. Because they just figured, well, the daughter's not coming in anymore. You know, she's not gonna complain. I just wanted him to be clean. That's all I asked. All I asked is for his hands to be clean and him being fed. Gonzalo tested positive for COVID-19 in late April. Dad, you're not going nowhere, huh, Papa? I'm going to be with you. Hi, Dad. G. G. This was the last time Angelica spoke to her grandfather. I was going to quarantine with him. I said, I don't know where I'm going to put him, but he's coming home. And then I told him, I said, Grandpa, I bought you a bed. I said, you get better and come home. He said, okay. He didn't come home. He died less than a month after he became sick. 18 other Kingston residents also died of coronavirus and more than 100 residents and 60 workers were infected. I just wanna know what happened. 
where what went wrong um why why did he go through all this based on what i know it strikes me as you know you've got a lot of people they're in pro close proximity to each other and you have inadequate staffing and at least in the initial stages you had staff that weren't even provided with ppe that sounds like a recipe for an outbreak in some ways the outbreak at kingston and other nursing homes all over the u.s is a reflection of everything that went wrong with the country's handling of the pandemic a lack of personal protective equipment contact tracing and widespread testing fueled the crisis the thing that really went wrong in the united states and actually most of the world was a lack of recognition of the fact that this virus is absolutely deadly to older adults, but more specifically to older adults who live in congregate senior housing. But for nursing homes like Kingston, the problems go beyond the federal response. It was spreading, you know, it was like a fire in there, basically. And it was not, uh, not contained at all. They tried, but uh, with a lot of failure. And then you had uh, the health department come in, saying different things, but they failed there, you know, to, to give us the right uh, information on how to use that little bit of PPE that we did have. So that's what we were, and then struggling to keep everything clean and sanitized, that's what we were dealing with. It was almost like an, a nightmare you couldn't wake up from. We didn't know what to do. We were scared for our families. We were scared for us. We were scared of bringing something home. They were giving us masks that we would have to use for four to five days saying it's okay. Even though I would look it up and I would tell my manager or my supervisor, this is not right. We're not supposed to, it's fine. Just leave it in the sun, it's fine. There was a lot of negligence on their part, management, supervision. You're telling your staff, you know, your nursing staff, that this is how we're going to do it. No, they didn't do that. And was there supervision or management or anyone continuously on these people? No. Do you think the facility was prepared for COVID-19? No. Why do you think there were so many cases at Kingston? I, I don't know, I just, think they just didn't know that it would spread like it did. Kingston is on a government short list of the worst nursing homes in the country. It's been flagged for having a history of serious issues with patient care. Facilities with poor track records pre-pandemic have had worse outbreaks uh, than the facilities with a better track record. So, I mean, nothing really that surprising. Uh, facilities that aren't as equipped to do good infection control, did worse with infection control with COVID-19. So these are all the complaints filed against Kingston in just one year this year, 2020. State inspectors cited Kingston 39 times for health violations, more than four times the national average. There was a lot of mismanagement. It goes down to when I would be cleaning my showers, there would be fecal matter, you know, just left so when these people you know the uh, nursing they would um, take the resident their shower you know you're supposed to rinse it off you know it was just a lot of things like that and then you had residents that were digging you know excuse me and i mean digging you know in their pamper it's because it's a natural instinct to try to clean yourself because they're waiting for so long there and we've i've seen that you know so many times there Kingston has lower than average nurse staffing levels, according to federal records. Experts and advocates we spoke to said that understaffing is a chronic problem in the industry. Kingston is a for-profit facility, as is about 70% of the skilled nursing facilities in the United States. And so how is that facility able to generate a profit? We have to cut back on staffing, it's the only way. Matt Clark is an attorney in Bakersfield whose firm has filed multiple lawsuits against Kingston over the years. I think that there's one answer to what amounts to really two questions, right? Why have they had so many citations and why were the epicenter, why were they the epicenter of the COVID outbreak, at least for a period of time in Kern County? Inadequate staffing. That's always the, the answer. If there's not enough staff to meet the needs of the residents, they don't get fed as much. Staff um, that are in a hurry, a lot of times make more errors. So there's more medication errors. They cut corners, things don't get done and people die as a result. 
Minerva says conditions at Kingston worsened after it changed ownership. They took turns visiting Gonzalo every day. My biggest pick with them was my dad having feces and his nail. So I asked the nurses, you can't see his hands filthy? Oh, um, the night shift got him up, you know, this morning. And I said, but you guys don't even wash their face or their hands. She goes, well, we'll make sure next time. I said, okay. So maybe a day would go okay. And then here we're dealing the same thing again. It was all the time. Despite these problems, Kingston gets millions of dollars from government health care programs like Medicaid and Medicare to take in residents, including low-income patients like Gonzalo. Do I have a system I'd want to put my parents in? No. No. I mean, if you're filthy rich, yeah, there's a working elder care system, private pay system that I think is probably sufficient. But for everyone else, no. And we know there's only going to be more elderly people coming down the pipeline, uh, in my opinion, it's a completely broken system. If it's broken, who do you think is accountable? I think that owners of nursing homes, at least in the for-profit world, have accountability, right? The ownership of these things, the way it's structured, it's like an onion, and you've got to peel back a layer, and there'll be another layer, and then you peel back a layer, and there's another layer. And to get to the center, it almost never happens. We wanted to know who's in charge of Kingston. We're sorry. You have reached a number that has been disconnected or is no longer in service. And we weren't having much luck in Bakersfield. If you feel you have reached this recording in error, please check the number and try your call again. Actually, this is pretty amazing. These are all the numbers we've called, and we haven't been able to reach anyone. So we traveled to one of Los Angeles's wealthiest neighborhoods, Beverly Hills, to the home of a man we've been trying to reach for several weeks. He's listed by the state as Kingston's owner, Dr. David Silver. Doesn't look like there's anyone here. But we did find out about Silver's other job. He's the CEO of the largest nursing home management company in California, Rockport Healthcare Services. Security told us we can't go in without an appointment. We've been calling the office number to try to get an appointment. So it's kind of like a catch-22. We found Rockport's previous CEO, Dr. Michael Wasserman. Hello, Dr. Wasserman, how are you? Thank you so much for your time. I was told that I would be running the company. The long and the short was, that wasn't true. It took me 15 months to figure it out. So it's complicated. It is complicated. And it's done deliberately so. I believe so. And the challenge is, there's typically multiple ownership layers. The lawyers do it that way. So that the real estate owners will say, we don't have anything to do with operations. So if things go wrong, it's not our fault. I think what we're really gonna have to look at is what kind of influence do the real estate owners have on operations? We took a closer look at Kingston's records. Kingston rents the property from Shlomo Recknitz, or to be precise, from one of his many companies. The LA businessman employs Rockport Healthcare Services to manage his nursing home empire. Hi, Francisco, this is Melissa. Thanks for taking my call. We called a researcher at the National Union of Healthcare Workers. They've been investigating Recknitz for years. He's the largest operator in the state. For-profit nursing home operators in California, at least, tend to use um, these multiple corporate layers to sort of insulate themselves. Got they it. can do that for the purposes of insulating themselves for, from legal liability or from regulatory oversight or any number of different things. So when Kingston pays the monthly rent, whose owner is David Silver, yeah. Who is he paying to? Effectively, to Shlomo Recknitz. Welcome, Shlomo Recknitz. What, what motivates you? What prompts you to give? To some, Shlomo Recknitz is a celebrated philanthropist and community leader. But his nursing homes have a troubled track record. In 2014, then State Attorney General Kamala Harris called him a serial violator of nursing home laws. 
He's been sued at least 15 times for issues of negligence, elder abuse, and wrongful death in his nursing homes. The issue with the nursing home industry is the pressure that the owners of the nursing home real estate put on the facilities. And when the pressure to make money and fill beds overrides the, the need, the desire, the mission to provide quality care and do the right thing, that's when you get poor quality outcomes. That profit motive came into play during the pandemic. Last year, a change in government reimbursement policy allowed nursing homes to get more money for new patients. According to reports, these facilities could get at least $600 more per day for a COVID patient. At that time, you got to remember, a lot of people weren't going to hospitals for routine services, routine surgery, so the nursing homes were depleted of a lot of their normal um, pathway to residents. So they had to be creative if they wanted to continue to make a lot of money and taking COVID-19 patients probably seemed like a good idea. Advocates say this encourages nursing homes to engage in a profit-making scheme known as dumping or discharging some residents in favor of more profitable ones. It's been happening at nursing homes around the country. And it's really based on who's paying for the care and where can the nursing home make more money. It's not supposed to be legal. Okay. The facilities are not supposed to engage in that. Actually, we have filed lawsuits over dumping, okay? Successfully litigated lawsuits over dumping. Does that mean it doesn't happen? It happens all the time. In the last few months, it's picked up again. Um, we've heard of residents being sent to motels, residents being sent to homeless shelters, uh, lots of residents being sent to unlicensed facilities where um, there's no care being provided. It's really just room and board. And he was kind of confused, you know, dimensional and, and just roaming. He's a wanderer. That's what Daryl Kennedy says happened to his 89-year-old uncle, R.C. Kendrick. R.C. had been a resident at the Lakeview Terrace nursing home in Los Angeles for about a year. In early April, Daryl got a call from another facility saying that they had his uncle. And I said, what? Why didn't nobody didn't tell me? So the next morning, he walked off walked out of the Van Nuys facility. He told the lady he was going for a walk and he'd be back. And uh, he didn't come back, so he hopped on the bus and next thing you know, downtown LA. Then he got a call from the police. They contacted me and said that their uncle was downtown on the street like he was uh, confused and digging in trash cans, looking for food and all that stuff. It's a disgusting practice when it occurs. We're talking about the most vulnerable people in our society, and they're entitled to the same dignity and respect, and certainly the same health care and recuperative care as anyone in our community. But it doesn't always work out that way. The city is suing Lakeview Terrace over allegations that they're dumping patients during the pandemic. Who do you hold accountable for all of this? I would say Lakeview Terrace. The reason why I say that, you know, they, they negligence and unsupervision dumped him in the middle of the night like he's a piece of trash. That's exactly what they did. We reached out to the primary owner of Lakeview Terrace, Yehuda Schmuckler. Hi, may I please speak to Yehuda Schmuckler? He told us we were wasting his time and would not answer our questions. Lakeview has a history of dumping. In 2019, the city settled a lawsuit with the facility for illegally evicting patients who were homeless or had mental health challenges. And in the immediate aftermath of that settlement, things appeared to get better. But then we allege that things did not get better. In fact, they got worse. We wondered why nursing homes with poor track records were allowed to keep operating. So we went to talk to Molly Davies, who investigates elder care complaints for Los Angeles County. So what we've seen is that the regulatory enforcement system favors the industry above consumers. And that is precisely the opposite of what it is designed to do. Citations are a drop in the bucket to the amount of money the industry can make by cutting corners on staffing 
Why do you think some nursing homes with bad track records continue to get relicensed? I think because the regulatory enforcement system feels like they're in a rock and a hard place. There are only so many operators. Um, they don't want to lose nursing home beds because nursing home beds aren't growing. They're, you know, people aren't building nursing homes. The problem you have is if we start closing them down, where are we going to put the old people? That's why public health looks the other way. Robert Thorngren's mother, Dolores, was a resident at Country Villa Westwood, a nursing home in Los Angeles. Robert alleges that in October 2018, the facility removed her bed rails despite knowing she was at risk of falling. I never filed a complaint, but that wound up what I had to do. Yeah, because this is life and death now. I knew she's going to fall out of that bed. Two weeks later, his mother fell and hit her head on the nightstand. She was on life support for nearly a month. And uh, I was by her side. I held her hand because I promised her, I will hold your hand until your last breath. <laughs> Forgive me. And then she died. Robert is suing the facility, which is also owned by Shlomo Rechnitz, the nursing home magnate. The lawsuit claims that the nursing home was understaffed and the people who did work there didn't have proper training. They say this was an attempt to cut labor costs and increase profits. If it's all about profit, because labor is your biggest hit, right, um, on your dollars, and if, you want to, if you're going to cut, it always circles back to that. So you start spreading things around where you don't get things in place, like that little mobility bar. Just basic things can have catastrophic results. In 20 years of practicing practice. elder abuse law, My Mike Lord. Moran has worked on a number of Recknitz cases. I have serious, and I'll be nice, concerns about how Shlomo approaches the industry. Sharp business people who want to have a uh, business of taking care of the elderly, you need to put them first. I think. After Dolores' death, Country Villa Westwood was fined at least $20,000 by the Department of Public Health. Shlomo Rechnitz continues to own and operate the facility. He didn't respond to her repeated requests for an interview or a comment. I never got a phone call from Country Villa uh, expressing we're sorry for what happened. It's like another day for business. If anyone has a loved one that they are thinking about putting in, definitely find out. Who owns the business? How's the business set up? Go to a lawyer, work in reverse. The problem has always been enforcement. So the, the results of violating the regulations is often very minimal punishment or no punishment at all. We asked the California Department of Public Health how operators with troubled track records continue getting relicensed. They said each application is considered on its own basis and that their office conducts comprehensive investigations into complaints. As for Kingston, we eventually heard back from Dr. David Silver. He said they've been working closely with the state health department and as of September, they had no new COVID cases for three months. I believe that years and years of an industry that has functioned as a business and not as a deliverer of quality health care has led to a lot of bad habits. So every dollar that is spent on that real estate is not being spent on direct patient care. There's just a level of acceptance for putting older people onto an island and casting them away from the rest of society um, that would not be tolerated with any other group. And I think that that's just a, mainly a result of ageism and really poor government monitoring. If this pandemic isn't enough to sort of change the culture of the way we do policy for older folks in this country, then, then probably nothing is ever gonna do it. The problem being without oversight, 
all we're going to see is the total number of deaths. And the total number of deaths are going to be quite frightening once we finally know what they actually have been. With COVID, nursing homes would become this country's killing fields. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed deep cracks in the U.S. elder care system, raising questions of whether some nursing homes put profits over patient care. We're growing older. The whole world is growing older. And uh, how we take care of the elderly tells us what kind of people we are. <laughs>